what I want to basically talk about today, and you guys can actually uh, chime in on that, was uh, violent realization and the unsheathed sword. So uh, as the podcast and what we're doing here keeps improving, more people start listening to it. We're going to talk, bring it into more philosophy as well as dealing with life. So basically what we're doing here is actually taking our actions and bringing them into real life. So, you know, facing anxieties, facing different things, like to bring it into what your life is about now, where it is now. So the unsheathed sword is really about standing against adversity. Violent realization coming into that, people don't have an understanding of what violence is. So if I had to ask you guys, what do you, what do you think violence is? What do you think is violent? Let's go, let's do, what do you think is violent? What's violence? I mean, in anything. It could be, you could say, war, snake attacking a bear. I don't know. What, what's violence? What do you think is violent? Either one I of think it's a step above aggression. In the sense that violence, I think there's a want to destroy. So murder. Not necessarily murder, just a real, you know, you just kind of, I don't know. There's no easy way to talk about it, is no, it? No, there isn't. But I mean, I, I can say, I can tell you like what aggression is. Aggression is just like you get some road rage, you flip somebody off, you know? Or you get mad at your buddy and you just like, you know, hit him in the back of the head a little bit. Like you're not really trying to hurt anybody. That's aggression to you? Yeah, I would say that's To me, they kind of go together, depending on what you're going to do. Well, I, I don't know. I, I really couldn't. Now, you know, when you press me, like right now, I really actually could not so give you a good definition is? of violence. But I can tell you what isn't violence. Anybody can say what is violence, but what is violence? But like what is so what do you think violence, violence is? Violence. Is violence war? Yeah. Okay. War, I would say. Is violence like violence. when somebody uh, mugs you or comes at you on the street and, and just beats you like hip to a pulp? Is that violence? I'd say that's violence. You would think that's violence? Yes. What else? What else? How else? How would you categorize it? So you look at, at the news and they all promote violence because violence sells. You know, and they should show oh, some eight-year-old kid just got decapitated by this guy on a bus. You know, and, you know, like, that's violent, right? Okay, so how would you, how would you discuss what violence is? I would call violence the essential process of creation. Well, that's a little bit heavy. But when you talk about violence, isn't that in your gene pool? Yes. Yeah, violence what does your genes want to do? Oh. Out compete the other genes. That's it. Just so that's part of your genetic code as well. That's part of, you know, what we do. We think violence is like, okay, violence is, you know, violent because it's this guy's murdering somebody or doing what there is. And there's crazy violence. Like you got a, a kid, 16 years old, goes in and starts shooting everybody or goes in and kills a bunch of kids with his gun. You know, that's violent, right? But that is not violence. And even our gene pool, what we do to to, uh, we'll say, to protect our gene pool to reproduce, to keep going and keep it in the gene pool, which is we can deal with that on a different level. So violence, like what you said, okay, it would be creation, right? So creation didn't come in quietly. It came in with violence, right? right? It came in with imagination to create, right? So boom, the Big Bang wasn't quiet. <laughs> it came in and it was noticeable. So violence, when you talk about violence, it's really our social interaction with what we think violence is. Violence is actually the sword that cuts both ways. So when you take aggressive action against someone and you take aggressive action as well, that sword that cuts through adversity is forging the path as you go. You're forging that path. As I said earlier, when you practice, it's not something you're waiting for. It's <coughs> practicing in the now. You're practicing in the now. So when you look at violence, you're looking at society's labeling of what violence is. And of course, you guys are learning techniques and stuff to protect yourself against that type of violence. But if you ever had a gun pointed to your head, and the guy just before he pulls the trigger, unless you're good enough to stop that, you're probably never more alive at that point in your life. You're staring your end, unless you have technique to bail you out. You're never more in the moment at that time of that violent act. But the society labels what violence is. Oh, my eight-year-old daughter got raped by this man. Would you say that was violent? I would say that's pretty violent, yeah. Yeah, right? So we think violence is in that area. Human beings being against other human beings and stuff and whatever it is. 
But violence has a duality to it and has a center. It also is death and rebirth within the self. So you're saying is it doesn't have to be intent. Intent is in society. So we view violence yeah. and you're learning how to, you know, like if you saw somebody being hurt and you guys know how to do what you're going to do, you, if, if a neighbor across the way is being attacked violently, what's your decision there? Now, the guy that's attacking that guy violently just like knocked an eight-year-old girl down, starts beating the grandmother, and then jumps on the guy and starts beating him. Now, you're looking out your window and you're seeing all this, and you don't have time to call the police. Now, you have to go out and take action, right? Or you could say, well, man, that guy looks really dangerous. <laughs> I really don't want to go out there and, and face this dude. But if I don't, I'm going to feel guilty for the rest of my life. And that's all social violence and also your skill sets. At that point, how do you beat that? How do you beat that? You have to understand and balance out that violence. In other words, if you go out there, it's 100% committed to the action you take. So if I had to walk out there, my whole brain, my whole chemistry has to change. And I have to become even more violent in action, in action against that individual. But the difference is, the difference is it's violence with understanding instead of violence amok, just acting on your emotional anger. So the difference as far as combat goes, I condense it, I shrink it, and it's 100% committed to the action. In other words, you just become that. So if a person's coming at you with 100% violence, you come at them with 130%, kind of like kind of weighing it out. If you're going to take action, you have to be committed and completely committed to the action that you take. Is that violence? Or is it aggressive action, violent realization? Right? You need to take action in everything that you do. But we label violence as murder, as rape, as, you know, and it is, it is violence in a society. But violence in the self and violence in the other sheep's sword means cutting through adversity, it means taking action. Right? And what the world, wouldn't you like to see the world change? Be a better place. We stop wars. Would you like to see that? Yeah. I would. Yeah. Okay. What else would you like to see in the world? What, what would you like? Police reform. Okay. You people communicating better. Yeah. Right. You know, having a better understanding of one another. You know, some different things happening in that. Do you, Do you think you're the only ones that like want that? Better politicians. People that aren't so corrupt. Mm-hmm. You know, a person that's corrupt doing their corruption doesn't think they're corrupt. When a president or a, a politician thinks what they're doing, they may be protecting their gene pool. Hey, um, these people have got to suffer, but my family's got to be okay. And the people that I care about or my group is going to be okay. They just do it instinctively. Right? Right? So you may have a person that's doing what they're doing, but they're also maybe obsessed with want, need, power, all that different stuff. But you would like to see all that change. Do you guys think... You're the only ones? No. I think there's lots of people. Everybody wants it, right? <laughs> Almost 98% of the surface population wants it, yet we don't have it. And yet we have all this stuff that because we don't have an understanding of what violent realization is. So if I'm standing in front of somebody and it has to happen, then there's a violent realization, but you have to take action. I'll tell you one quick story. I was in 7-Eleven one time, and I learned two things from this story. So I'm in 7-Eleven at one time, and this group of guys came in to 7-Eleven. Uh, I, you could tell they were from Newark, and they parked the car, right? And they got out, and the guy behind the 7-Eleven was an Asian guy. And they approached me a little bit, the guys, and I understand street, and they just, you know, like we just, we, you know, speaking to each other funny, you know, like, you know, hey, we got any money? I'm like, hey, and, um, <clears throat> but the whole purpose of them was to, to rob the place, right? And they were trying to get, there was another guy in there who came over with me who stayed in the corner because <laughs> he just wanted to see what was happening. And there was also, in this story, a retired cop outside watching the whole thing who knew me. They both knew me, and they wanted to see some type of action, which is really, really stupid, <laughs> okay? But I didn't find that out till later, all right? So these guys were doing, so the guy that was in the, in the corner 
was just scared that he couldn't even move. So violence started happening. The guys knocked some stuff down, whatever it was. And I knew that they were there to rob the place. Now, but the guy behind the counter didn't know is that the other guy went back out into the car and he came back with a sweat, you know, sweat coat. And I could see the gun laying on, on top of it. So I approached these guys and here's one lesson. I said, okay, I'm going to just fill up my, my cup with steaming hot water. So I can use it as a diverter. The first lesson there is don't do that because man, it's really hard to hold that cup. <laughs> my hand was, it was incredible. I'm switching hands. <laughs> guys do something, you know, it was really incredible. Now in this action, as all this is playing out, um, and it would have, I realized when I took action that somebody was really going to get hurt. Not only from the steaming hot water, which was hurting my hand, but the guy, I could see the action that would have taken, would have pulled a gun out of it, threw away, probably would have shot his friend and the other guy. All the time, there was a retired cop out there watching this whole thing. Right? He had his gun. And the guy behind the counter had an emergency button to push. And he thought he had it under control. And they, nobody had it under control. What went through my head is that I saw these guys coming from another town, doing what they're doing, and I, and I felt for them. Okay, I felt for them. Like I, I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't want to take action. And I realized they were just angry at the world. And I could feel the anger coming off of them. And they're against the person that's over here and when they robbed the place and they sent the other. And finally, because I didn't leave, they left. So I think they wanted to get everybody out of there. But I had to snap myself out. So in other words, at that point, if action had to be taken, I couldn't be, I couldn't have empathy at that point. I couldn't feel sorry for the guys that were in this, their lifestyle or wherever their lifestyle was or how they, what trauma they were suffering. And I didn't know that the, two, the guys that, the guy, the cop that was outside and the guy behind them were two idiots, right? And all that I was dealing with. I had to shut my, there was a certain point where I realized in that situation, whoa, I got to commit to action. I can't think about, I can't let all of this stuff come in. I got to put out my sword and cut through the adversity of this. If I let anything go and I'm not 100% committed to this action, it could end a lot of people's lives, including my own. That's the unsheathed sword. You know, that's committing to uh, action and uh, letting things go the way that it's going to go. So when you talk about Social violence, material violence, gangster violence, all of that. That's all what we call violence. But really, violence is about death and rebirth, about creating. It's also about taking the violence within you and making it more positive. So violence is about death and rebirth. That's right. Then it's about that cutting through adversity. Death and rebirth, right. I like to call it, because that's what helps me deal with it. Well, death if and I, rebirth, I, I mean, that violence is happening. Biologically, Everything. for anything to reproduce, <clears throat> so you anything see, to grow, something else has to die. Right. So scared. that, to me, on nature, is how it's like the Big Bang that you were talking about. Earlier. Even on the microscopic level, all processes are violent, from the smallest to the very highest. So is that violence, or is that it's violent violence realization? Is death and rebirth. Yes, it's violent realization. So in our society, we have all these rules and all these things that, of course, we we need to control our violence for the most part. That's why. You know, you have people also abusing it. And the people that are abusing it is why we have the things that we have. And then you have a person that's not abusing it and can be abused by it. And you have to commit to action, whatever it must be. But violence is not, that's what I mean by violent realization. See, but that story about your dad, who put, when he put the head, guy's head through the TV, be a good example of what you're talking about, or am I remembering? Or well, that was defensive violence. Yeah. The guys went up. Uh, yeah, because he hit the guy so hard. That was defensive violence, and that was an uh, act of uh, prejudice. Um, they came over to beat up a, his neighbor, who was a smaller guy. My father's not a big man; he's about my size, uh, but he was—he had my, you know, aggressive attitude and knew violence and seen a lot of combat. And he beat up the four guys there, and it basically he was defending another guy that was down that moved to the fam, moved down the street who was black. And it was back in the 50s, it was racism was more in the open. It's still very insidious now. It's worse now, I think, because it's all insidious. But then it was open, and um, my father came over and defended the guy that was supporting him and beat these, these guys up. <clears throat> well, that was 
violence to reaction. He had, you know, cause and effect. Uh, when you have to act, you have to be 100% committed to that act, and that's violent realization. Violence isn't bad. We just label it. We see it as one thing. We don't see it as a part of what our creative structure is. And if you act violence because of want, jealousy, suffering, you know, you know, a criminal's mind works many different, much different, especially streets, you know. On the streets, you know, if you have something, they believe it's theirs. They own it. It's kind of like having a cat in the house. You may have the cat in the house, the cat is doing whatever it's doing, but they own you. You don't own them. <laughs> right? They're the ones that are in charge. I'm sure you know that better than <laughs> most. Yeah. I'm, and they're, they're great creatures, but they really follow through on that. And it's like a criminal mind as well. So you can't, you could talk about violence in that way, but that's not violence. That is action. It has a negative effect. The unsheathed sword is about cutting through adversity in your own life. That sword cuts both ways. And the first thing is how do you take action from one's own center? How do you discover that action? <clears throat> Creation didn't come in in a whisper. Right? Whatever you may believe, wherever you are, whatever race you may be from, an alien race, or, it all equals out to be the same thing. Nothing's above boom. And maybe there's many booms and many other bubble dimensions. Who knows? There's so much stuff out there. Who cares? I don't care. What I care about is the now. Right now. And what action am I taking with violent realization? Violent realization, you see things differently because you're looking at it as self-creating. As standing in front of it. And also, you can, you know, like in the arts and what you guys are learning, like in the SWS, the systems within systems, you're starting to see, well, whoa, there's a big difference when it comes to murdering somebody and just, you know, beating somebody up or whatever it is. You could beat somebody to death, but it's just maybe you could do something. Maybe you could take action. You could stand in front of it. On that you... note, how does uh, violence uh, come into play, the, the philosophies of violence we have come into play? with how we practice or develop systems within systems. Well, you guys know, you got to deal with your shadow demons and your energy walls, you know, which is a method that our listeners aren't going to really know. Let's say watch the videos, and maybe we could talk about that a Aren't little bit shadow more. demons? Shadow demons is a projection, a mental yes. projection. But also shadow demons, okay, on. let's talk about the brain, just a little bit. We'll touch on that a little bit. We're going a little bit deeper here. The brain works in chambers. And in those chambers, your brain works in chambers. That's why you guys are so repetitive. You get into these chambers and you stay in those chambers because that's how the brain works. It stores in that chamber. And what you're trying to do is take aggressive action to enter into that chamber. When you get into that chamber of thought, that's levels, the shadow demons are really different levels of consciousness within your own brain. And what you're trying to do is to move into that section of your brain, like a room. And when you guys are in that room, you're tripping over the furniture. Things are good because you can't see what's in the room and you, you could get stuck there. And as you bring more light and understanding of that chamber, you bring a different level of consciousness to the self, a different body movement, and you're looking the demon in the eye. But first, you got to see them in their shadows. They're also your teachers. And you're tripping, you're doing over the furniture, and then you start to see them. They got teeth and they got all this stuff. And then they transform as you bring more into it at that level of consciousness understanding was in the chamber of your brain and then you're ready to move to another chamber there are many rooms within the matrix and many levels of understanding within that and we all are intelligent and some of you guys are more intelligent than others but intelligence is not wisdom and intelligence will will look at things differently because you know it thinks it's smarter but levels of consciousness you've got to be able to look those demons right in the then they become your teachers. But we're talking metaphorically, we're talking symbolically. When you bring that into action, then you're dealing with your shadow demons. So yeah, a projection of shadow demons will say, stand in front of you or your energy walls when you're practicing your hitting in the now to actually bring that into the now, you know, which is what systems within systems is trying to do. But it's trying to bring you also into a different level of consciousness. 
And as that different level of consciousness starts to move, that's how the mind starts moving through the body instead of being stuck in one place. The brain is so powerful and has so much to it, but to understand even the matrix of creations, we're just pea brains. This is what we are. But basically, it's a, it, it has your genetics, has your DNA, everything's in there. It's controlling your whole nervous system. It's changing things. It's allowing you to see things. It's about entering different levels of consciousness within the self. And if you could do that, then naturally you move with more power and you move differently. And you're pulling the sword out. You're facing it. You're out. You're, you're challenging it. And you're going into that room. And the more light that comes into that room, the more shadows fade. But they always find a place to hide. And when you see them, eventually you understand it and they fade away. And that's how you start to move within the subconscious, we'll say, within the chambers of your brain. But your brain works in chambers. No matter how smart you are, it gets locked in. It stays there. And you stay in your comfort zones. Violent realization is challenging your comfort moving through it and we think comfort zones you know like like say a lot of people will say oh you know i would if all of a sudden i would feel bad if i became rich you know or they're afraid they have fears of success they have fears of this and that's all just labels guilt and all those different things you not that's not violent realization it's you challenge it and that's where the sword cuts both ways you forge that path in the now that you are in. And it allows you to have different levels of consciousness and thought just within your own being. And that to me is what violent realization really is. <clears throat> so, yes, if you're standing here and your neighbor is getting their eight-year-old kid beat to death, the first thing you should do is call the police. But then you, don't, you call the police 911, but if you don't take action, he's going to kill the, the grandmom and the old person out there. Are you good enough? To go out there and take action against a guy that's completely gone amok and is snorting something that just is making him crazy and wants to chew your freaking face off. Pink cocaine. Have you Whatever. Pink cocaine? It could be anything. There's so much. But I'm saying now you got to go out there. And now you got to stand in front of that person and you have to, you got to switch gears. That's violent realization. In other words, boom, you take action. And that story about the 7 Eleven thing. I had to switch gears, literally had to switch gears to really put my brain somewhere else because I had empathy for these people that were there. You know, just give them the money and let them go. But they were going to shoot somebody, you know, because they were angry. You know, so I had a, I, I had a little problem there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't want to, and I had the abilities to hurt these people, even though they were out. I was like four of them. And there was another guy sitting in the car. You know, but they wouldn't have survived what I did. I know that. And people would have died because of the cop and the other guy who had the button to call the police. They, they, none of them took action. That's what ticked me off more than anything. And I said, you know, people could have died here if I would have taken action. And, you know, but violent realization. So when you talk about society, on a whole, and it's reprotecting re-protect, itself, right? And it's doing what it's doing, you know? It's not, it's just social violence, you know? And if you went out to defend your neighbor, then you, you would have to take action. Even though, you know, you guys aren't really violent people, but it's in there. But now you're protecting a stranger. If that was your girlfriend out there being attacked by a dog, you would go out there and you would own life to, to do that. If you had a child and a child is needs an operation, would you not change? Would you not want to be the one that's got to, I, I would change places with my child. If your child has cancer or anything, or if somebody you care about, this is all genetic code. This is all in our gene pool. In our social environment, we're not going to get it, but we can get it as an individual. Live in the world the way that you would want to see the can't change it, but you can change it within yourself. Represent that. That's violent realization. And that's the sword that cuts through adversity. 
and what I try to teach you guys also physically, why it's so, <clears throat> the systems within systems is so different. Bringing your physical temple, which is the only thing that you're borrowing right now, the only thing that you have, and trying to use it better, both in thought and action, not wealth or fame. Because you see what wealth and fame and fortune does to people too. If they don't have a balance with it, it destroys their lives. And I can't even explain what's going on in that world politician world and the, 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 the rich world and they're just like vampires <laughs> just you know trying to just terrible but that's not that's not violence you know? <clears throat> violent realization is really confronting you and really starting to enter into the different chambers of thought and consciousness you guys understand what I'm saying do you see it yeah. It's very complex. Yeah, but I think know, we should grasp, round this off by giving a definition. So, so what would a, be a, a good definition? A violent realization. Say it again. A, viol- a definition of violent realization. Just that term. Violent realization is recognizing that violence is not an easy thing to talk about. All right. When I teach a class, we'll just say, and I teach trauma, people that have trauma. There's a book I would really recommend people to read is The Body Keeps the Score. And when you read the stories in there, it's all about what's really amazing about that book when it talks about the body keeps the score. It's really talking about your genetics and your DNA as well, how things are handed down from one generation to the other generation, right? And your family, especially the two generations back. But what's wonderful about that and what it's talking about is that violent realization is recognizing where you stand in the now and how you would take action in the now. So... Can you talk about violence when you're teaching it to somebody and make it nice? So if I'm teaching a class of women that have been raped, or if I'm teaching a class about women that were, you know, scared about being raped, and then I have to talk about what rape is, is there any nice way to talk about that? Not no, really. <laughs> no. Is there any nice way to talk about war no, and the violence? It has to be real. And that's on a social thing. That's violent realization. You can't escape violence. So that's where it comes into like what I'm talking about. We're taking philosophy. We're bringing that stuff into it. But violent realization, there's no nice way to talk about it. If somebody's on a bus, like I read a story like five years ago where the guy just decapitated a guy on the bus. You know, so I teach techniques about, you know, being attacked from behind. He sawed the guy's head off with a, with a little knife, like a buck knife. Sawed his head off. You could probably find that somewhere. You know? I'd rather not find it. <laughs> Saw his head off on the bus in front of everybody. And he was messed up on some kind of drug. That was uh, the body keeps the score, brain, the- mind, and he- body in the healing of trauma by Bessel van der Kork. Okay. Body listeners. keeps the score. I really recommend that book for people to read if they really want to understand what, you know, how do you talk about that? You know, so in the book, it talks what I thought was great. The part that I liked about the book was that it talks about it in our own DNA and how you store it and hold it and why there's so much trauma and stuff in people today. Just like the chambers in your guys' minds where you can't move out of them and you keep staying stuck in your comfort zones with the same movement because you're not facing your shadow demons. You're not bringing light into that room. And as much as you hate it, you're also comfortable <clears throat> because it's challenging. That's violent realization. Violent realization, as far as the world goes, how do you... How do you teach somebody nicely about violence? Can anybody tell me that? If any of our listeners are listening to this, how do you teach about violence? If you got a way to do that, pass it on to me. Because I, I would love to say, you know, it's like Barbie coming at you to kill you. Barbie's coming at you. Barbie's coming out to kill you. I'm stabbing you now. I'm stabbing you. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? I'm stabbing you. Do you feel it? <laughs> it's like, it's still violent. You know, she's doing with a smile on her face. And she's pink and she's going to go and, you know. Move away with Ken. I don't know. But the whole thing is, it's like, house could be pink and all. Violence is violence. How do you talk about it nicely? I always had a hard time with that. And you got all these colleges out there and stuff like that. The reason I stopped teaching at this one college is because they don't really address what violence is in the area. And these girls and people are getting mugged and raped and shot in that area. I won't mention the college, but I eventually had to leave it. Because I just, I just couldn't. Why? Because they have... They have to make it look good and they have to make it look clean. 
They have to make it look this so their kids go to the college. Well, let's teach some reality in the college. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be this. It's violent realization. How would you address a situation that you need to learn how to handle? The one story that I just heard was, uh, and there's a lot of uh, gangs uh, in the area. Uh, and one of their initiations was that this girl was walking out to a, um, a, 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 up there a garbage out, but she saw a $100 bill there. So she went for the $100 bill. Of course, when she walked for the $100 bill, she walked into her area because it was set up. Four guys or five guys grabbed her and raped her right there in the alleyway because they knew they were safe. Part of the initiation, I'll say. And then they wrote, they carved in her arm slut with a knife. And this is happening in these areas. Now, I'm not saying that the area should be, you know, that's, but that's violence. How do you talk about that nicely? But you can teach a person how to, hey, man, you see that you shouldn't have walked over there in the first place. You shouldn't be out there alone thinking that nothing's going to happen because you're just like, oh, groovy. Yeah, dude, man. Woo. You know, like being happy. Because life all of a sudden changes like in a moment. You know, changes. In a, how do you talk about that? Hulk, how do you say something nice about that? You know, when you're teaching it. That's violent realization. Man, when I teach a class, it has to be real. I'm going to talk. If I'm teaching that group, you can't like, you know, there was this one, I'll tell you, there's one story where this a Marine uh, taught his daughter how to protect herself. And there was another story when I saw the video where this guy just walks up to this other girl because the parents are so protective. You go, I don't want, and I had that experience with some people that I was talking about. Then they realized, yeah, that's really what you're trying to do is cool. Make them aware, not scared, not paranoid, aware. Most people, when you talk about violence, what happens? What's the after effect of that? They become scared, fearful, and they become paranoid. And, you know, there's a way of talking about it in a way that doesn't have to be that way. But anyway, short story, the guy's father, the Marine guy, so I'm watching this video, and the guy who's this bad person, who doesn't look like a bad person, walks up. She took a shortcut through a, um, a building, but they still had cameras going on there. To get, and the guy just walked up to her, young maybe uh, 11, 10, 11, 12 years old. And he just grabs her hand and then you see him walk away. And he raped her and killed her. Another, the guy with the guy, the Marine guy, violent realization. He taught his daughter about violence, but it was out there and also how not to, and he showed her some basic skills. The same thing happened to his daughter, right? She pushed the guy over the bushes took the number of the license plate of the guy's car when he drove off. Down the road, the cops were there, pulled him over by the license plate, opened up his trunk, and he had chains, belts, everything else to, to, to put, put this person in chains. That girl, because she was aware of violent realization, lived to go another. And of course, the father, who was, you know, taught it. Now, he may have been a bastard, I don't know. But his actions led his daughter Say, but this is not right. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. And the guy who was, uh, we'll say, a pedophile, wasn't strong enough for the daughter. You know, they're gonna attack on people that they can. They can get. I mean, it's a little bit different than the story I said when you have got a guy running over there. It's just you know beating up your neighbors and stuff, and you got to take action. Then you have to be 100% committed to the action. That's all violent realization. But how do you talk about it? Nice. People don't want to talk about it. They want to pretend it doesn't exist. Creation created it because of violent realization. It wasn't like, oh, let's just make, you know, a planet. <laughs> you know, and we'll do this, we'll do that. It was aggressive action. And how do you, that's what I mean by violent realization with what I'm trying to teach, or like, like with The Body Keeps the Score. That's a, that's a hard book to read. I don't know if you guys have ever read it. There's some stories in there that you read, like, how can people do this? You know, and, and then, you know, how could they do it to their own family members? And not just that, there's a whole lot of stuff. The, the body keeps the score and it stays with you. You know, it stays in your body. It stays there because it's handed down from generation to generation. That's what fascinated me about the book. But there's no nice way to talk about violence. You know, and if you did have to defend your girl or anything like that, you would, you would die for it. You know, that's just the way it is. You would protect that. It's also your genetic pool. That's what I liked about the body keeps the score. But, you know, it was like the family game, incest. 
Everybody can play. But certain people don't want to play and you force them to play. It's not nice stuff. And it's genetically handed down. So you don't only are attacking, you know, when you're talking about systems within systems, you're discovering things within yourself. You're discovering things from the generations back. From your uncle. From your aunt. Maybe even from the beginning of the particles that created you in the first place. Right? They're still a part of you. The elements, you can't escape that. It is what it is. It's the only thing that I believe in the society, which we overuse, it is what it is. It's the only time it really makes sense. You know, if a person is mistreating you and stuff, you say, well, it is what it is. No, you could change that. <laughs> you can't change, boom, and here we are. That is what it is. The matrix is what it is. Within the self, first, the idea is to really understand the matrix of your own body temple. Discover all those things, and, and you're here to, to, to use it. Not just, you know, get a house with a picket fence and try to live that, unless you've got killer Barbie. <laughs> that, that life of, you know, is this good? You, you got to go. So violent realization and has two sides. Violent realization is recognizing to take action within your own life. And violent realization in a society, we view violence like, that's murderous and, and horrible, but that's not going to go away. And what you need to do is learn how to stand in front of it. Recognize when it's happening to you. And, you know, I've been in knife fights and everything else. And, man, you're never alive until you got somebody pointing a gun at your head. It just At that point, you're just, like, really right there. You know? You're really right there. Even if your life's going to end or it is, or, you know, you're, they say your life goes in front of your eyes. Well, let me tell you what that's like, okay? Isn't it your life goes through your eyes? You just realize like, oh, shit. <laughs> and you're right there. Like, boom, you're right there. Like, and it's not that you're like, you just see everything like, oh, this is going to end right now. Man, take some action or it's going to end. <laughs> you know, this is going to be over. <clears throat> and that's what I mean, like your life flashes before your eyes. What flashes before your eyes, you're going to die unless you do something. And some deaths are unexpected. You know, you're riding your bicycle and you go head on with a car because you're an idiot and you're riding on the wrong side of the road and the car doesn't see you because it's making a turn. You know, all of a sudden, but at that moment, at that right moment when you're heading to that car, you go, maybe this is it. You know, a moth to the flame. At one moment becomes one with the flame. Right? Violent realization. I think violent realization is something that we need to talk about as a society it's not going away. You know, it's not going away. And, you know, there's, there's all these different levels. Like you got the gangs out there today and they're still acting violently with these violent initiations. Why? Why are they doing it? They don't need to do that anymore because it gets internal loyalty against a 12 year old kid or, you know, how they start is just put a gun on the table. You put a gun on the table with a, 12 year old or a 10 year old they're just fascinated you know and that's how it starts and then they got to go out and prove themselves by shooting somebody that should stop you don't need to do that anymore you know, but they do that's violent realization you know that's what happened to that girl when she picked up that hundred dollar bill i often wonder did she get to keep the hundred dollar bill <laughs> or did they just take that you know ah you don't even get that and then they carve slut on her she didn't even do anything. I think it was on her arm or her forehead. I wasn't sure. You know? Violence, right? That's violent, right? Unsuspected, un nothing like that story I was telling you where my friend's driving down the road, a tire comes off on the truck or, or a car in the next, on the next one, driving around 287 in the divider, the tire's bouncing, bounces over that, bounces in front of his car and decapitated him. Took his head right off. And that's what I'm talking about, peripheral vision, you know, as well, the training. You know, you think you're safe, you're behind your car, you're doing what you're done. Is that violent? We don't call it violence when a storm comes in and just kills thousands of people. Well, why isn't nature violent? That's violence to me. Right? When the lakes come through and we handed all that thing, where was that? Where the, the eddies broke, right? We just left those people there in the in a, in a stadium, crapping and on each other and all that stuff that was happening in New Orleans. 
talking about Hurricane Katrina? I don't know what hurricane it was, but it doesn't matter. That was, you don't think that was violence? And the violence that happened after it, the rapes, the, the, the crime, the, 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 the looting. Crazy, right? Where's the government there? Where were they? Where was the, where was the Coast Guard? Where was everybody? We came after. And there's all these stories that happened, but that's irrelevant. What was relevant? Do you think that wasn't violent? Do you think the hurricane wasn't violent? Oh, it's not, it's not the hurricane's fault that, you know, like we had an earthquake and 2,000 people died. It's all the same thing. It's violent realization. It's not going away. There's no nice way to talk about it. Would you feel any better if your family got wiped out by a tornado? No. <laughs> because you can't take action with it. It's still violent. But if your family got wiped out by a person who came in with an axe and killed them and you knew who they were, then maybe you could take some action. Do you think your actions would be nonviolent? Mine would. I would stop that person, but I wouldn't torture them. I don't have any reason to torture or cause pain to somebody else that's an idiot. Even if you kill them, that's the I would just end it. <laughs> that's it. But I'm not going to, like, my suffering, you got to feel my suffering. That's just not violent realization. Yeah. You know, a reject needs to be taken out. I can't fight a tornado. I don't know. I never try. But the whole point <laughs> is, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I'd be like, ah, I'll be up there. You're fine. You know, <laughs> Punching the Nobody air. Nobody can say you didn't try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my point is, it's like violent realization is really seeing things the way that they are. Not running and hiding from it. And violent realization dealing with you as an individual is about entering into the different things and unsheathed sword facing the reality of adversity. Whether it's something that's standing in front of you, something you hear about, it's not going away. And we just pretend that it doesn't exist. How can we pretend that that doesn't exist, both in our own lives and in the world? We hide from it. That Marine taught that little girl, 12 years old, pushed the guy down, pushed him over a bush, he ran, got in the car, and they caught him. Because of what he taught her, <clears throat> she's alive today. The other little girl, the parents protecting him, Hiding that, or oh, we don't want our daughter to watch this or see this or do that. <clears throat> There's balance to that, too. No balance there. They lost her. And you don't think the end of her life was, like, not violent? And the guy that did kill her, story, he didn't mean to kill her. He was just scared. So he strangled her. I didn't mean to do it. <clears throat> yeah. I didn't mean to stab the guy. Well, why'd you stab him 18 times? <laughs> you know, like, okay, well, maybe the first one you stop, but you keep going. There's something going on there. You know? <laughs> and that's also emotional content, which could be another subject that we could talk about on the next podcast. But violent realization is we need, we need, it needs to be addressed, and you need to learn how to protect yourself from that and see it. Yeah, And also, um, violent realization within the cell. It exists within all of us. It's our whole genetic makeup. It protects and it will take advantage of the week. Anything you guys want to add? That was a lot. But yeah, <clears throat> I, I definitely see that violence is a very complex, multifaceted subject. And it's something that most people don't like to think about a lot. Or when you're talking level. about on a social level. On a social level. On a, 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 a philosophical level, what deals with you. We'll say philosophy to me. It search for the truth. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. You talk about it that way, you start to see that. Well, that's creation. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, it's all like death and rebirth. You don't think that happens with the chambers of your mind? When you have a new realization, mini enlightenment, you say? You discover something within yourself. You don't think that you died to one thing and would be born into something else? I think it happens everywhere. Everywhere. In every form. That's what the phoenix represents. Burning off the old and coming out of new. Violent death and rebirth. Yeah. With the fire. But in stuff, this happens within your internal being. A different level of your consciousness discovers something more. And the old concept is your foundation, maybe where your wisdom has come from, but now you're generating it in practice. Now you're also generating it to do. Mm. Moshe, closing <coughs> thoughts. Oh, you know, I think that was pretty thorough and also just pretty well explained, but I guess that I would say the 
real the real main idea to take away about violence is that it's just it's part of just the nature of the of the universe. Yeah. And it's how also, things yeah. it's part know, of nothing life. can be created without being right. destroyed, without <clears throat> something else being destroyed. And we should be more aware of it. I think we, we need to protect our children, our families, our our friends and in the world because there's, there's just a lot of things that are out there you need to recognize when it's coming at you and see it not not talk about it leave it in the dark or it's like it's like watching a horror movie boy I mean, i'm watching this horror movie it's really horror movies are terrible today they're so lame but the point is it's like you know you're watching a horror movie and why are you watching this i'm so glad that's not me <laughs> well, see, for the idea of violent organization too you know it kind of goes not even hand in hand it kind of just really is the same at same as another thing that you always tell us, which is, uh, you know, what's true meditation? Staring the demon, demon right in the eyes. eyes. Staring the demon right in the eyes. Yeah. And we can, we can, we can uh, end this with that, and we can talk about, as well, in the next classes, we maybe, I don't know, uh, we can actually talk about uh, emotional content. Mm -hmm. You know, emotional content and how emotions really rule you. I feel like this is a very good segue to that. Yeah, sure. you know, and as you know, emotions start as one thing, but then when your emotions are out of control, they become something else, and the thought comes into action, and which really causes violent realization to happen in the world, and also also negative. But you can use that to improve yourself to have more discovery. So we can end that if you can remember, or if anybody listens to it and they write in, you know. <laughs> okay, next remember. time, listeners, we're going to be talking about emotional content and what that means for systems of systems okay guys so. hey, thanks for listening uh i don't know uh we're, we're new with this we've got one out there talking about you know uh, where systems when systems came from this is the second podcast we're going to be doing a lot more now we've got our acts together and once we get it more together there'll be a place where you guys can write in and make comments and then if you make a good comment about something um we may actually bring it up uh, if you have questions or anything like that so all right guys thanks for listening Hmm? Grow, learn, teach, everybody. Yeah, grow, learn, teach. Bye-bye.